Hey there, and welcome back to Adventurer's Arsenal, and also welcome to my new subscribers. Thanks so much for stopping by. On the menu today, we've got a piece of footwear with an explosive kick to them, those being the Fall Blast Boots. These are going to generate an explosion beneath you when you've fallen from a great enough height, which will damage any mobs within range of the blast. And this is actually going to be pretty simple and short today, coming in at just one function and 12 lines of code in total. So let's get coding. First, I'll be writing the item code for the boots, which I'll be making iron, but they could easily be any boot variant that you want. Then I'll name it and give it some lore, as well as Feather Falling 5 to help prevent the player from taking too much excessive damage themselves from the fall. And I'll be giving them Unbreaking 5 as well to help boost the durability of the boots, which will wind up rapidly decreasing from all the explosions it'll create. And I'm also applying this fake enchantment with the non-existent ID of 10,000, which has two purposes for us. One, it allows you to give items an enchanted glow effect without needing to actually apply any enchants on the item, though in this case it doesn't even matter since we do already have two real enchantments on the boots anyway. But two, and more importantly here, is that the fake enchantment acts as a unique item ID that will help us later on in the code when we're trying to target this item. And as far as scoreboard objectives, we'll just be needing two of them today, those being FBB Own and FBB Fall. FBB Own will help in tracking all players who are currently wearing a pair of the boots, which we'll be handling in the next section here. On this line, one will be removed from FBB Own every tick for all players, and here FBB Own will be set to two for all players with the boots in their foot slot. Players wearing the boots will maintain a score of two in FBB Own as long as they wear the boots, while non-boot owners will have a score of negative infinity. So if the score is 2, then that means the player has the boots equipped. And this is where having this enchant ID of 10,000 helps us out. To trigger this line of code, it needs to detect the Fall Blast boots on a player, and this can be accomplished by searching for a piece of armor in the player's foot slot that has a specific data tag matching a data tag on the Fall Blast boots. So in this case, I could search for a pair of boots with the name Fall Blast boots, or I could search for boots with lore that matches the lore on the Fall Blast boots, or I could search based on a specific enchantment that's on them. There are some problems with searching based on name and lore, however. Players have the ability to change the name of items by putting them in an anvil, and they could change any boot's name to Fall Blast boots. So if I searched based on name, then any boots could just be renamed to Fall Blast boots and gain explosive powers, which I don't want to happen. This means that we need to run a search using a data tag that can't be altered through quote-unquote regular play without the use of commands. Lore can't be changed without command use, and so we could use that. However, one small issue with that is that lore can be long sometimes, and so it could just be a little bit cumbersome to use as a search parameter. And that brings us to enchantments. And while it is true that players can add enchantments to items through normal play, what they can't do is add fake enchantments. So we can search for boots with an enchantment that has the ID of 10,000, and having this line of code search parameters being dependent on that prevents players from being able to cheat and replicate the item, at least without the use of commands. And this would be good in an adventure map sense, where access to a certain item and its powers is meant to be restricted until that item is found. And then in the future, if you want to add more items with fake enchant IDs, you would just want to make sure to increment this number with each new item added to 10,001, 10,002, and so forth, so that no two items have the same ID. And as for why the number is 10,000, well, as of right now, there are 30 different enchants that are available in Minecraft, and the highest enchant ID is 71. So making our fake ID 10,000 just makes sure that any future updates that add enchantments won't interfere with our ID and overwrite it with an actual enchantment. Now, unless Jeb is feeling super magical and decides randomly to add thousands upon thousands of new enchantments in some kind of Harry Potter magical update or something, I think our fake ID should be just fine. Now let's move on to creating the explosion. FBB Fall will help determine if players have fallen far enough to activate the explosion. It uses the criterion stat.fall1cm, which is a stat that measures player fall distance, which is perfect for our purposes today. But how far is far enough? Let's just say that a player has to fall at least 7 blocks in order to generate an explosion. If we fall from a height of 7 blocks, you can see that it measures the fall distance as 659, as you can see to the right in the sidebar. 
So if a player falls and their score in FPB fall is at least 659, then an explosion will be created. So we'll run this effect command on all players with one in FBB own, meaning they are wearing the boots currently, and at least 659 in FBB fall, meaning they've fallen the minimum fall distance required, giving them the resistance effect for one second with an amplifier of three and setting hide particles to true. And this is to lessen the explosive damage the player will take from the explosion so that they'll actually survive. And if you're wondering why I don't just put blast protection on the boots instead, well that's because when I was testing this out with blast protection on the boots, I found that there's a point where the boots will be just about out of durability, and then on the next fall they'll break mid-explosion, which caused me to lose that blast protection and leaving me unprotected from the explosion, which would then kill me. So this way, even when the boots break, I'm still guaranteed safety because this effect will always activate and keep me safe from the blast. A creeper will be spawned on top of them who is ignited and has a fuse of zero, which will cause the creeper to explode immediately on spawn, and it has a blast radius of three, which represents its area of effect. A fireworks rocket will also be spawned on top of the player, which I've made silent, which will mute the sound of it launching, which I just prefer to not include, though strangely it actually does still make the firework exploding sound, but I'm actually fine with that one, so I don't mind it being included here. Though you would think it would be silenced as well, but either way it doesn't matter to me. Lifetime represents the number of ticks before the firework explodes, so having a lifetime of zero causes it to explode immediately on spawn, just like the creeper. Its type is 4, so it will create the burst firework pattern when it explodes. And lastly, it explodes into red, orange, and yellow particles, which will then fade out to black particles to sort of give a fiery explosion slash smoky kind of feel. And to easily generate your own custom fireworks without having to manually type out a long command like this one, you can check out the description for an awesome website that will actually do all the hard work for you. It's incredibly convenient, and it's what I use to make this command. And you should also check out its summon command generator too, which is also really useful. I, I've used it countless times on countless occasions. And the firework generator is just a tad bit outdated, so just make sure that you do the following things to the commands that it generates. Change fireworks rocket entity to fireworks underscore rocket, and just before the color values, add a capital I followed by a semicolon, exactly like I have here. And again, a link to that website will be down in the description. Then some flame particles and explode particles will be generated as well for some extra fiery explosion goodness. And once all this is done, FBB fall is set back to zero so the player can have another go at creating an explosion. If the minimum fall distance of 659 isn't met after a player falls, then we also need to make sure to reset FBB fall back to zero. Otherwise, they can just fall from a number of smaller heights to add up to 659 and create an explosion from a height that is less than 7 blocks tall, which isn't what we're going for here. And so if a player's score in FBB fall is 658 or less, then FBB fall will be set back to zero. Okay, so that'll do it, and now we're just going to need some willing test subjects, and I think this pit of zombies should be acceptable enough. So we'll make our way up here to optimal blasting height, and bam, there's the explosion, killing pretty much everything. But also, if you noticed, I bounced up after impact and was able to jump out of the pit as well. And that's because the creeper that was spawned on me gave me a little upwards boost when it exploded. And that's kind of a nifty extra feature, because you could use that for little maneuvers or tricks, or doing exactly what I just did, like jumping into a pit of mobs and then jumping back out onto a safe ledge nearby or something. Also, because using these boots means being blown up by a creeper every time you use them, the durability of these boots is pretty much going to be ripped apart after not too long. And if that's something that matters to you and you want to change, then you might want to consider adding the unbreakable tag to the boot's spawn code, which works just like it sounds, and it'll make the boots unbreakable with infinite durability. Or you could just use diamond boots instead of iron ones, which just naturally have a higher durability. Or you could also increase the level of the unbreaking enchant that's on there. But one thing with that is that I noticed it had severe diminishing returns after a certain point. Like even putting it up to level 20 only seemed to squeeze out about 5 more uses or so, if that even. So just something to keep in mind, but you can try it out for yourselves if you want. And also, even with feather falling and the resistance effect, you're still going to take quite a bit of damage from the fall and explosion. 
So, you know, just, just be careful when using these, kids, okay? Okay. And by the way, you can fall up to about 35 blocks with nothing but the boots on and just barely survive with about a half heart or so if you started out with full health and so long as you walk off the edge at the top instead of jumping off it. Actually, you know what? I just realized something. The difficulty you play on will affect how much damage the explosion does to you, since difficulty modifies enemy damage, and this explosion is created by a creeper, who is obviously an enemy. I recorded this in hard difficulty, so that means you should be able to fall from even higher than 35 blocks when the difficulty is set to lower than I had it. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. But yeah, I would say that this test was pretty successful. I mean, one might even say that these boots are a blast, or that they're the bomb. There's fun afoot when wearing these because you can give enemies the boot. You can see for yourself. <coughs> anyway, that's going to do it for today, but thanks for watching. If you sufficiently liked what you saw, and you just really wish to express these feelings in a meaningful way, then I'd appreciate if you left a like down below, and maybe even subscribe and hit that bell icon, which will let you know when my new videos are out. If you've got suggestions for anything you'd like to see me make in future episodes, or if you've got questions, thoughts, feedback, or anything at all, then you can let me know down in the comments. Over on the left is the previous video in this series where I code out Solaire from Dark Souls as a combat companion if you're interested in seeing more programmy type stuff. Thanks again, and until next time.